What's up guys? This is Richard again for another edition of Learning with Rich. So for today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to add and modify structural columns in Revit Structure 2017. So assuming that you know already how to create your grids, okay, so in this exercise, I'm going to add structural columns to a grid and modify them by adjusting their constraint parameters, all right? So let's get started. So I'm just going to move first my properties here at the uh, right side. All right. So I'm going to add the structural columns. So to do that, so let me just move this. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to select here the structure tab. And then I'm going to select here the structural column tool. So I'm going to select this and then from the type selector, so I'm going to select 250 by 73 type of wide flange column. So I'm going to select this. Okay, and then from the options bar, so I'm going to make sure that the option here is set to height. So meaning, if you set this to height, the column that you will be creating will be starting from your current level going up to whatever level that you selected here so it should be higher than your current level so if you select height if you select depth so make sure that the level that you will be selecting here is lower than the first floor okay so in this case i'm going to select height and then for the height i'm going to select here uh, roof so meaning to say the column that I'm, that I'm going to create will be starting from this level until the roof level. Okay, and then what I'm going to do next, so I'm going to select the grid intersections uh, C1. So I'm going to pick here. Take note that you can also press space bar, okay, if you want to rotate your uh, column. Okay, so I'm going to pick the intersection of uh, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Okay, so be sure that the inter uh, be sure the intersecting grid lines are highlighted as shown. So this makes the column to snap to the intersecting grid line. So the column will then move with the grid lines. So as you will notice from your option here. Move grid, uh, moves with grids by default is checked. So what will happen is if I move this uh, grid, the column will follow. Okay. So after I place these four structural columns, so I'm going to select here modify to exit the structural column tool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, select the columns at uh, or I mean the column at the grid intersection C4, which is this one. Okay, and then I'm going to press uh, space bar. So I'm going to rotate this. So let me just turn uh, turn off my thin line so I can see the line widths of my model. Okay, so these are now the columns. So I'm going to select this and then to rotate the column, I'm going, I'm going to press uh, space bar. Okay, so as you can see, it's now rotated to 90 degrees okay and then after that by the way you can also select multiple columns and rotate them together by pressing the space bar okay now so I'm going to select all the columns on my grid C grid line C and then I'm going to copy it Okay, so I'm going to copy that by using this tool. Okay, I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to pick the base point here. So let me just check the constraint first so that the movement will be horizontal so I'm and vertical. It's like ortho in AutoCAD. So I'm going to select this. And then let's say I'm going to copy it here on my grid uh, G, grid line G. Okay. So that's now my columns copied. Okay, <clears throat> so like what I've said, if you want to rotate all the columns, 
at once so you can select all the columns that you want to rotate and then you can press space bar you see so it's now rotated okay then after that I'm going to activate again my structural column here and then this time I'm going to select the type uh, 250 by 49 so W 250 by 49 so I'm going to select this and then there is an option here on our options bar so rotate after placement so I'm going to check this one <clears throat> to rotate the columns as they are added <clears throat> and then again I'm going to I'm going to make sure that the height here is set to roof okay so to add and rotate the column so I'm going to click the intersection on D1 okay so this is the D1 so I'm going to pick this and then you will notice the rotation control that prompts you to graphically set the rotation angle so you can uh, pick for example here so you will see that it will be rotated by 90 degrees okay all right so I'm going to clear this time the rotate after placement and then I'm going to place the cursor at the intersection of grid grid line uh, grid intersection E1 so I'm going to pick this okay and then after that I modify select and I press space bar to rotate it okay then I'm going to continue adding my structural column at grid intersection F, uh, F1 I'm going to add also here at D4, uh, E4, and F4. Okay, and then another way of adding column, as you can see, there is an option here, uh, multiple panel. There's a panel here, and then there's an option here at grids and at columns. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to select at grids. So click the add grids and then to add multiple columns to multiple uh, multiple uh, multiple grid intersections so I'm going to control select grid lines uh, D E F and then I'm going to pick also the two and three so you will notice it will create the column okay so based on the intersection of D E F and grid line 2 3 okay and then after that I'm going to press space bar to rotate there you go and then just make sure you need uh, that you're going to uh, finish the columns are now added at the selected grid intersection okay so I'm going to select modify here to terminate my tool and then these are now my column okay so to modify the structural column, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the columns. So by the way, let us check out this in 3D view. So this is how it looks like in 3D view. Okay. Okay, so these are now your uh, column. Okay, so now to modify the structural column, so going back to my floor plan, so I'm going to select all the columns. I select all the columns. And then from the instance properties dialog box here. So as you can see, the base level here by default is first floor. So I'm going to change this to uh, basement. So I click the basement. So what will happen is the base portion of these uh, columns will be going to the basement level. Okay, so if you're going to check here the, the view in your section view or in your elevation view when you create it, you will notice that the column, the base part of this column is now at the basement level. Okay, so after I change the base level, I'm going to change also the base offset. So I'm going to key in here, let's say minus 450. Okay, so minus 450. Okay, and then the top level again it's on the roof so I'm, I can also add the here top offset so what will happen is the top portion of the column will be moved to 
the value that you're going to key in. In my case, minus 50. So what will happen is the column at the top portion, the top level, will be moved down minus 150. Okay? And after that, I just select your apply. So to modify the uh, grid dimension, okay, so to modify the grid dimension, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the grid line D and then you will notice there is a uh, temporary dimension that appears between the grid line C and D. Okay, so I'm going to click the grid dimension. So let's say this one. Okay, and then I'm going to key in the value. So that's how you modify the dimension. So I'm going to press enter. Okay, you see? It's now move. So you will notice the columns will follow as well. Okay, so in the 3D view, it looks like this. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so this is how you add and modify structural columns in Revit 2017. Hopefully you learned something from this video. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can put it on the comment section below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. You can also add, uh, you can also install Quipspear to your iOS and Android devices. So you can chat me directly. You can check out the description of this video on how to use the Quipspear uh, application. So once again, this is Richard from Learning with Rich. Have a nice day.